So basic training is divided up into three phases. So from the very beginning, the soldier understands phases, phase lines, and what phases represent. It's one reason why Battlefield Resumes uses phases and phase lines, because it's intuitive to a soldier. Anyone in the military has used it, and it's easily identifiable of what it is. So for those that don't understand phases, let's just talk about basic training phases for the time being. So basic training phases, which there's three of them, are represented by a color. So red, white, and blue, let's say. And for phase one, two, and three, respectively. So basic training is progressively it allows you the responsibility, privileges, independence, each time you achieve a new phase. So whereas a trainee in phase one is constantly monitored and led around by the drill sergeant, Phase 3 trainees are largely responsible for making sure tasks are completed and correctly and on time and keeping themselves on schedule. This relates to resume writing as in during a phased operation of resume writing, as the drill sergeant for you, the resume writer in Battlefield Resumes, we help you and we walk you through 6 to 10 iterations. So in the initial one to two, three iterations back and forth, we are working back and forth with you in excruciating detail to try to help you learn the method and how to apply your military knowledge to a resume. Later on, around the six to ten iteration mark, you'll understand exactly what the questions that we're asking mean, how we want them answered, and then what to expect when we when um, we finish your resume and give it back to you. In some basic training stations, however, the current phase is denoted by the color of the guide on, which is carried by the platoon. Following the recruit's successful completion of a field training exercise, which is a final exercise just before the graduation. In phase three, which is normally a blue guide on, sometimes traded for a red color or a red, white, and blue guide on that symbolizes successful completion of all three phases. So let's just take a look at phase one. Recruits are subject to total control. So during phase one, or otherwise known as red phase, recruits are subject to total control, meaning that every action is monitored by the drill sergeant, constantly corrected, Recruits are often subjected to group corrective action for even minor infractions, the purpose being to develop an acute attention to detail and foster a sense of common responsibility among the unit as a whole. That's where the initial team building comes in. So in week one, which begins with the recruits meeting the drill sergeants who will be responsible for their training throughout the uh, basic training, the drill sergeants pick the recruits up from the reception battalion and then tr transport them or march them to their company area. The company area is a common area for the company. The company uh, and the entire company, normally around 200 recruits in basic training, and is surrounded by four barracks normally, one for each platoon, which is normally in basic, it's a little larger than a normal. So it's about 50 recruits each per company. Upon arrival at the company area, recruits are subjected to exercise, exercises such as bag drills. This is the training exercise in which all recruits take their duffel bags and they're all dumped into one large pile and the recruits are told to find their duffel bags and simultaneously chaos. And within a set time limit, the exercise is designed so that the soldiers fail their task and they must keep trying again and again until they realize that they must work together in order to complete the task within the specified time limit. Following the bag drill, the recruits are divided into different platoons. So why is that important? Well, when you're transitioning out of the service, it is extremely stressful and you feel as if you're on your own. You have to think back, especially for those of you helping military, the transitioning military or veterans. Think back from day one in basic training that they were taught how to work as a team. And from that point forward, 
they've always worked as a team. The camaraderie is phenomenal. So now it's time for them to transition to the civilian workforce, and they're on their own. They're looking for their team to help. So all they're really looking for, they know they can accomplish, but they're looking for help. They're looking for team members, camaraderie, something to, that's bigger than themselves. Although they know they can accomplish everything that they're given on their own, they normally will have a team and a unit. They're trained, again, just like I said, from day one of basic training, they're trained to work collectively within a suspense time.